Hey everyone, welcome back to Carrie's Thrifty Farmhouse. If you like decorating on a budget, you're in the right place. Today I'm back with more quick and easy farmhouse home decor DIYs, and I'm really excited for this one. So if you want to see how I take a dusty old faux tree from the thrift store and turn it into an impressive spring garland that would rival swags and garlands from any high-end store, then you gotta keep watching. And you know the drill. If you like what you see, I would truly love for you to like and comment and hit that subscribe button to help me grow my channel. Now with all the formalities out of the way, let's get started. So as I mentioned, I scored this five foot faux tree at my favorite thrift store, Volunteers of America. It was regularly marked 1010, but because I went on half off day, I got it for just over $5. There were two other trees available when I was there, and now I'm wishing I'd gotten those two. I had originally thought I would use it to make a wreath, but when I went to transition my mantle to spring, I knew I had to get rid of the evergreen garland, and the mantle was looking really bare without a covering. So that's how this DIY came to fruition. Fruition. I started by trimming the branches into pieces that were roughly seven or eight inches long. And even though the branches looked pretty thick, the wire inside wasn't any thicker than normal floral stems, so they were still simple to cut with wire cutters. And the tree was so tall that I had to use a different angle to get these shots, so you're getting a pretty honest view of what my workspace really looks like, and it's pretty messy. Oh, and don't mind Pepper Doodle on her normal investigative rounds. She'll pop in and out a few times here. After a few minutes of work, I had a good pile going. Here I'm showing what the cut stems looked like. Many of them had a couple small branches with five or more leaves, and they had good color variation, which I knew would be great to add dimension to my garland. I did, however, realize that the leaves were pretty dirty, so I enlisted my very helpful hubby to trim the rest of the pieces while I started cleaning the cut branches. And there's Peppy again. I just used a damp microfiber cloth to clean the leaves and they polished right up. Some of the leaves were loosely attached to the branches and came off if I pressed too hard with a cloth, so that was the only thing I had to be careful about. What I did was lightly hold the bottom of the leaves while I wiped outward and that worked really well. For the main strand of the garland, I'm using the wired twine from the Dollar Tree and I'm using 22 gauge floral wire to attach the leaves to the twine. And to give my garland more texture and variation, I'm also adding in some florals from the Dollar Tree. I had some of these fun wispy greens left over from my St. Patrick's Day copper pots last week, as well as some white berry looking florals. I also had some of the boxwood looking stems left over from my Kirkland's topiary dupe, so I'm going to throw some of those in too. They all have varying colors and textures so this will help give it a really high-end look. To speed things along I decided to cut all of my stems at once and make piles of each type. This will make it a lot easier when I get to the arranging of the garland because I won't have to switch back and forth between cutting and arranging. Similar to the tree branches I'm leaving about two inches of stem beneath the leaves so that I can easily attach them to the twine with the wire. So here are my nice neat piles and I'm glad I got this footage because they didn't look that nice after I got started with the arranging. So now it's time for the fun part, the arranging. I had my twine and floral wire ready and started to arrange my first bunch. For each bunch I used two to three of the tree branches depending on how full they were and then I added one or two of the other greens rotating with each bunch. For the first clump I have two branches and one of each of the wispy and the boxwood stems. I left about six inches of twine at the end. It's good to have a little excess twine in case you need to tie it into place at some point. Speaking of tying, I just had the thought that this could even be tied to an arbor for a wedding or even a small version could be used as centerpieces. But anyway, back to the attaching. I placed the bunch where I wanted it, then grabbed the end of the floral wire and bent it around the stems. Then I wrapped it tightly around the stems several times to hold them in place. Now here's the florist secret that I learned from watching other tutorials. 
don't cut separate floral wire for each bunch. Just leave it in one strand. This gives it more structural integrity and also leaves less sharp wires exposed. So that's a win-win. So now I'm gathering the next bunch. This time I'm using a boxwood stem and one of the white berry stems in with my tree branches. Then just like with wreaths, I'm hiding the other stems by overlapping them and covering them with the tops of the next bunch. And again, I'm wrapping the stems with the floral wire several times as tightly as possible. I actually got this florist hack from a tutorial I watched from Buta Jardin Florist, which I will link below. She actually used fresh eucalyptus in her garland, so this can be used for real florals as well. Learning this trick has definitely gotten my creative juices flowing, so I already have ideas of how I want to use it on other projects. I believe the twine is about 7 feet in length, so I just kept working my way down attaching the bunches. I used the white berries about every 7 or 8 inches to give it visual interest, which ended up being about every second or third bunch. Then on the other bunches I rotated in the other greens, so each bunch had at least one other type of stem in besides the leaves. While I continue working, I thought I'd show my husband Rob enjoying his new toy with our boys. His birthday was Sunday and we got him the adult version of the crazy cart. It's a go-kart that has casters on the rear wheels so you can shift up and drift and spin it. The boys have had the kids version for a few years and my hubby has always been super jealous because he was too big to use that one. So this was a special treat. We live just a few houses away from the boys' elementary school and the snow had melted just enough so they were able to use it in the parking lot. Guys, when my dad's on the crazy car, let's see you go, Daddy. Full gas it, Daddy! It doesn't look as fast as this on the camera, but he is going fast, trust me. Look at this boy though. Look at that. Bruh, he going so fast. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that nice little intermission treat. And actually that was perfect timing because now I'm here at the end of the garland. So I didn't want it to end with the stems and floral wire showing. So in order to hide the stems, I placed some branches in the opposite direction. And then I experimented with the other cuts to see what worked the best for disguising the ends and making it look nice and professional. Now I'm just gonna hop into the next project and save the full mantle reveal for the end. I'm creating a fun farmhouse sign and started out with this cool panoramic frame from the thrift store. The picture frame section is always my first stop at the thrift store and this time didn't disappoint. This is a great quality solid wood frame that was marked $8.98, so I got it for about $4.50 on half off day. I even hated painting this nice wood, but there was this paint splash on the frame which I'm guessing is the reason the former owners got rid of it. The little paint splash imperfection seemed very close in color to the mineral chalk paint by Waverly, so that's what I used to dry brush over the frame. I used my chippiest of chippy brushes, dipped it ever so slightly into the paint, then dabbed off the excess before brushing it lightly onto the frame. If there were any spots that I painted too heavily or needed some blending, I used a baby wipe to blend it. This worked well and gave the frame a slightly distressed look. It ended up being a little lighter too with a grayish tone, so it matched my decor even better. 
Then I painted over the picture with the plaster color from Waverly. I used a small brush around the edges so I could be more precise, and then I used a bigger brush to cover the majority of the picture. I like to pour some paint straight onto the surface. This reduces waste of excess paint, and I also don't have to use a plate. It's another win-win. And I don't know if anyone noticed, but it's kind of interesting that this was an aerial photo of a farm, and I'm painting over it to create a farmhouse sign. The irony is not lost on me. Chalk paint is great for covering pictures with color because it's a little thicker than regular acrylic craft paint so it takes less coats. It took one regular coat and a light second coat in just a few areas to get good coverage on this piece. Next, I'm using the Mineral Color by Waverly to give the background a distressed look. For this technique, I use the oldest brush I have that has bits of old paint stuck to it so it lays down really uneven lines. I dip the brush into the paint and dab most of it off before lightly brushing onto the sign. I move the brush in the same direction across the surface so it looks almost like the wood grain is showing through. You can do as much or as little distressing as you like to achieve your desired look. I like it to look weathered but not like the paint is chipping off. I used my favorite WordSwag app to create the text, Oh Hello Spring. I used the font keys for the Oh Hello part because I thought it looked like old typewriter keys. I liked the font penmanship for the word spring. It was a fun but easy to read script. I love the WordSwag app for layering fonts to create cool farmhouse signs. If you want more information on navigating the app, I have a quick tutorial in one of my previous videos, so I'll link that below. I just printed the text out in the sizes I liked and then used my Arteza carbon paper that I've mentioned many times before, which is the best thing for lefties like me because it doesn't result in any spudges. And I'm not affiliated with WordSwag or Arteza, I just like to share when products or services simplify my process. To fill in the text, I used a dark gray twistable colored pencil from my boys' school stash. I thought this was the perfect shade that wasn't too dark like a black Sharpie would be. Plus, because of the texture, it almost looks distressed, so it looks really cohesive with the rest of the piece. I'd say these twistables are almost a mix between a pencil and a crayon, so either of those in a similar color would probably work to achieve the same look. I figured you didn't have to watch me color, so I skipped filming the other text and we'll just jump to the reveal. So here's my new spring mantle. I absolutely love how this came together. The garland looks so natural and I love all the textures and it's nice and neutral, which is great because I could easily add a few colored stems here and there to blend with whatever seasonal decor I have going on. So I see this working for a very long time. And I love this spring farmhouse sign. It's fun mixing woods with florals for the perfect farmhouse look. And this project couldn't have been easier. Thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification button so you can stay up to date with my content. I have lots of spring DIYs headed your way to get us out of the winter blues, so stay tuned for those. See you next time. Bye!